Hello, welcome to Technical Founders. My name is Carlos Lara, AI Technical Founder, and in this video, we'll be learning about functions in Python. Functions are a convenient way to divide your code into useful blocks, allowing us to order our code, make it more readable, and also reduce it and save some time. So we'll go ahead and learn for the syntax of, of a function. So we start with the def keyword, and as you can see, function um, comes up. So this means that we're defining a function. Now, the next step is to give it a name, and usually we want to give it a descriptive name, such that when someone is reading our code and when we come back to it, we know what this function is doing. So we want a relevant name for it. So here, what we want to do is just print out some numbers. So for this simple video, we'll just call this print numbers. And this is usually the syntax when you have more than one word or the way the, the naming conventions, when you have more than one word in, in a variable, in a name, we use the, the underscore to, to separate them. So find print numbers, and then you do the parentheses to indicate that it's a function, and then the colon. And then you hit enter, and then there's a tab's worth of indentation here, as, as we have for, loop, for loops as well. So here we just want to loop through the uh, through five numbers, through a list of five numbers, and just print, print them out. So here we are going to, uh, from the loops in Python video, we learned how to use a for loop. So for, let's say, let's just call it i for i in, and we're gonna call, so range of five. So this is basically going to give us zero, one, two, three, and four. So the range of so numbers leading up to up to five, but not, in, not including five. So for, this is basically for every number in, in the range of five. So zero, one, two, three, four. What you want to do is just print that number. So we have defined our function. It's doing something. It's it's and now the way we now we have to call the function. So it's actually um, executed. So here we run the code right now. Nothing's going to happen because we just defined the function. But now we want to call it. So it's actually a run. So here we're just going to set, um, to call the function like this. We just call it directly by the name and and using the parentheses. So let's let's go ahead and run this. And Python, so this file is called uh, functions.py, and it's in my, in, my, in my directory here. So Python functions.py, and as you can see, it prints out 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we again, we define the function, define what it does, and look at the indentation. So it keeps, so for nested um, logic here, we have more indentation. So we know that a for loop, so loops in Python require indentation once you're inside the loop. So we have that one, but then we also have the previous one for the function itself. So the syntax is, is, is pretty simple, and then you call the function and it does what we want it to do. So that's great. So now, suppose now we want that uh, the function to have a return value. So we want to call this function, and for example, let's say we want, it, we want to assign it to some kind of variable. So here, we're going to define another function that is going to take the square of a number. So we'll define a function, and we can just we can call it get square. And the, and the square is just a number multiplied by itself. So here, and by the way, so well, suppose we just want the square of two, for example. So we would we would do two. And remember the indentation here and the colon, the syntax, two. So 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 this and say return. So this function, when we call it, is going to return the result of this operation, which is going to be an, an integer value. So here we can we can define a variable. Let's call it square, for example, and we can assign get square, just just like this. So and then just so you so you see it, let's actually go ahead and print out that that integer variable. So we define our function in the in the same way, and we're just returning to square two to the power of two. This means to the power of so two to the power of two, which is going to be four. So since it's a return, we have to assign it to a we can assign it to a, to a variable here. So this two square, so this four is going to end up here it's going to be assigned to this square variable and then we're just going to print it. So let's go ahead and run it. And as you can see here, we have zero, one, two, three, four, as we had before, and then the actual, the four, which is 
the, the this. So it, so you, your function can have a return value and you can store it in a variable and then use it um, later in your code. So very useful, very cool. And again, and you can call these functions multiple times. Like I, I can call this print number, so I can decide to uh, call it call it here here again, for example, if if I if I wanted to for some for some other reason. So again, it's it's reusable, it's concise, it's ordered. The name tells us what tells us what what it does. So it's just a, it's just a, a very nice way, very convenient way to divide your code, like I said, into useful blocks, and just again make it more readable, and then reuse it and help us save time. Because if we didn't have the function, every time we wanted to to x to do this logic, for example, we'd have to write it, write this for loop every single time. And this is a simple two line, but this fun a function can have, for example, let's say ten lines, and you don't want to be writing them every single time. So in this case, we're 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 writing it. Um, uh, just once to finding in a function and then we call the function so it's very convenient now there's a, another thing that you can do when, with functions which is they can have an argument so let's let's take the, the case here of of the get square function so suppose we want this to be more general you just don't want two squared you want any number squared so here we can give it um, a, a parameter here on an argument uh, to to the, to this function so we can we can call this for example We can just call it call it number for example, and here we want that number squared. So here, when we call get square, here we can actually pass in a number. So for example, let's say I want five squared, which is going to be twenty five. Store it in square and then print it. So this is more general. Now you can call get square and change this number, and it's going to to generalize. So you can have an an, an argument here, and if you don't specify an argument, you can just say uh, for example, this, and if you, for example, if I don't specify an argument here, uh, a parameter for this function is just going to grab the default. This is the same text for 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 the default. We don't need to have a, a well. We can just leave the default, but but you, but you don't have to. And but here I can just say five for, for example, and then this number is going to be five, and then it's going to return five squared or whatever the number happens to be. Execute this, return it. And now you have we have that value, and then we assign it to a variable, and then print it. So let's go ahead and run it, and actually leave, I'll leave some space here. And as you can see here, we get 25. So it's very very nice. You can pass, uh, uh, you can have arguments, and you can have multiple arguments. If you you were doing something more, uh, let's say a sum of two numbers, you can define another parameter, and you can put the two numbers, and then here you would do. For example, x plus y, return x plus y, if you had x and y here for, let's say, a function that, is, that takes a sum of two numbers. So you can get creative here. You can basically create a function for, for, for anything. So it's just, again, very, very nice, and they generalize with, with these arguments. Very cool. I mean, this is again. This is just an introduc an introductory video to func to functions in Python. But even here, you can get an idea of their power. And just to show you real quick what happens if you don't give it a parameter here, if you've defined one with a default value, it's going to take that default value. So let's go ahead and run it again. And as you can see, it prints out four here. Uh, this, this because the default is two because you didn't get, you didn't give it one. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, thoughts, comment below, and I will see you next time.